click, 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 click. Hello everyone, this is Take from BigHeadTaco.com. It's been a month since my last video, so I'm back in Vancouver, and right now I am in the Yan Kat uh, Rug Art Store in Vancouver. If uh, we could just take a look around here, and you saw in my intro, uh, a lot of the beautiful rugs by uh, Yan Kat Design. And here in Vancouver, it's the Finley Kat uh, Store down in the Railtown Design District of Vancouver. And we've done, I think, my Polaroid camera video was down in this area here, so uh, Jenny, who is part of the Finley, Jenny Finley, she allowed me to uh, come here and shoot my videos here, so thank you so much, Jenny. And she's also allowed me to do some of my photo shoots, so if you go to uh, Hobo Works and you see some of their work, I've done uh, some beautiful pictures with models behind. Uh, I'm not a model nor beautiful enough to uh, required to stand in front of something this nice, but you can see these are beautiful uh, carpets here. So thank you, Jenny, for letting me use this space. And I thought it would be a nice place to shoot my video on the Leica M-A, which from here on I think I'll just say M-A because I don't want to like saying dash all the time. But uh, I thought I would do a video here. So I'm going to sit down uh, at uh, my desk here. Actually, you can see this even it's a beautiful Rug? No, sorry, what do you call these things? Cushions, beautiful cushions. We're gonna sit on here. So, um, this is my review of the Leica MA. And I've had it for a week. Before me, uh, Igor from Ultra Something did a review, and he actually writes for the Leica blog or Leica, anyways, he's an official Leica reviewer, uh, as am I. And um, he had it the week before me, and then I have it now. And he's written a wonderful review, very witty review on this camera. And so you, sh you should look that up at ultrasomething.com. I think it's .com anyways. But uh, my thoughts on this camera. Well, first thing I thought I would show you is sort of like the, the heritage or the history, technological history of the mirrorless cameras and how this really is going back to the start. So let's, uh, I'm gonna put this down here and let's take a look at, if a camera girl looked down here, the Fuji X-T1. So this is another review camera I have. This is probably the ultimate in mirrorless technology. It has, uh, I'm gonna do my own separate review of this camera, but it's just a technological wonder. It looks retro with all the dials and everything, but this is a machine. Um, yeah, I just did a uh, sort of a commercial corporate shoot with this, a big group shot. Uh, even the lens here in APD, uh, 56 f 1.2 lens, um, super fast autofocus, super cool features. This is pretty much this, as technical, technologically advanced as you can get. Now this next camera here, also very popular, the X100T, is probably one of the best implementations of a retro look, design and feel, because it has the aperture dial, it has a shutter speed dial up here, and it looks like a film camera, and a lot of people even will think that this looks like uh, an M3 or an M2, uh, but it is not. And all, but however, these dial, all these little switches and dials actually serve a function, unlike some other cameras that look retro but don't function retro. So this is a, a great implementation of uh, the rangefinder technology because it does have an optical viewfinder as well as an uh, EVF viewfinder and it shares it in the same spot and uh, it also has a little mini EVF in there to help you with autofocus, uh, sorry, manual focus, exposure, and white balance. So this is a great camera. And then now we're actually getting into an actual uh, film camera, the Minolta CLE, which they co-designed with the Leica and they had their own Leica CL. Now this uh, at the time, I think it took almost 10 or 15 years before the next Leica was as advanced as this. This has aperture priority. This has a TTL. You can even see the um, the shutter there, the the plane there. That's actually for the uh, TTL uh, through the lens metering. And you, even on the flash, you can see that there's extra little connectors there for the uh, off the film plane flash exposure. So this is quite an advanced camera. This is an electronic camera. It needs a battery to run. And, um, but this was a really, it, it, I shouldn't say it did well, but uh, the CL was discontinued because it was doing too well. It was, 
think the M5, the Leica M5 was out at that time and it was outselling it. So Leica freaked out and stopped selling it, not because of the lack of sales, but because it was just doing so well. But it's a nice compact, This the Minolta version is plasticky, but uh, I like shooting with this as many of you know. And then we get to this. So the Leica MA or the M-A, I hate saying that. Uh, you can see I actually have the Minolta, I don't know, uh, I actually have the Minolta uh, the grip, the Minolta grip on it. I should have got a coin ready here to show how this works here. But um, there we go. Here's my change pouch from Japan. I love this thing here. So this actually is from the CLE. And when I looked at it first, I thought, hmm. The tripod mount, quarter inch tri threaded tripod mount, looks like it's in the exact same spot as the uh, as CLE. So I just popped it on and thought, hmm, I wonder if it'll fit, and it fits perfectly. So this is where it should be on, so I'm going to put it back where it belongs. Um, anyway, so the MA, MA is a fantastic camera, mechanical camera, there really isn't a lot to review other than the feel. So when I did the click click, I actually did take a picture. Um, I set it at uh, F, oh, F4 at 60th of a second. I'll take another, you know what, exposure will be off. Um, I'm going to add an extra stop and a half. I'll take a picture of camera girl here. Um, I don't have any um, pictures to show you or anything on the website yet. Uh, in the old days when you did the camera review, especially when it was a review on just the body, uh, the body is just a box. Uh, there's nothing to it other than, um, I mean, your film was your sensor. And so if you're testing anything, you're testing out the film. So uh, there really isn't anything to talk about this camera other than how it feels in your hand and uh, ergonomically how it works. And everyone knows how Leica works. It's a half stop on the lenses, a full stop on the, on the shutter speeds. Uh, either it's a one or two piece uh, crank here. And um, just the, the, the feel of the shutter. Other than that, there's the ISO. This, is, this doesn't, actually doesn't do anything. It just tells you, it reminds you what film you have in here. So unlike something like this where you can actually pop the film in so you remember what's in there. Uh, this thing is just a reminder to tell you what film you put in there. So ISO 400, which is probably what most will shoot with this camera. Uh, PC terminal sync, and it actually says uh, Leica on that, so don't lose that cap. It'll probably cost you 50 bucks to replace it. Uh, 4,700 US, so probably 5,200 Canadian. The older, no, the, the original style, um, Rewind. Some like the one that's on a bit of an angle, like on the M6 and the M4. Uh, Ultra something doesn't like this. He likes the one on the angle. But other than that, and then it just comes down to the feel. This it just feels wonderful. And I have film in here. You know what I'm going to do, um, camera girl? Um, I think I'm going to. Um, I'm going to just pull the film out. Everyone shows how to load the film. I'm going to show people how to unload this film. So. I'm gonna show how to unload it. So, when you get to the end, this has a uh, resetting uh, film counter, which is nice, so you don't have to remember to reset it. Uh, when you come to the end of the roll, which usually when you crank it just gets tight, um, you hit this release, okay? So I'm gonna hit the release now. So I'm gonna remember I'm at the fifth frame. I can reload this, okay? So I hit release, you pop this up, and then you start turning it, and you can tell there's rewinding. Since I'm only on the fifth frame, I should sort of feel when it gets to that point where it, there you go. So I feel the release, okay? And so you take this bottom plate off, which, you know, a lot of the digital Leicas have this sort of a similar thing. And it's not gonna show up very well, but it has an auto, like this doesn't come out. There's these little, three little prongs. And as long as the film goes in between, it, it fits. I mean, it catches. So I could, I could have, I felt that leader come off. So um, I can reload this, all right, if I remember where it was. So it just pops out like that. That's all you have to do. And when you put film back in, uh, when you put film back in, you have to make sure that this stays down. So 
So let's pretend film's in here. You pop this on. You have to make sure that this stays on this side. If you accidentally put it up and this up, like that, and then you tighten it, you know, this is still open. Now you're exposing your film. So you have to make sure that's down. So let's put this film back in again. So let's not only showing you how you load the film, I mean unload it, let's reload it. So let's pop this in like this. You pull out the leader as far as you can go. And then you try to catch it inside in the middle, oh, in the middle of, um, here you go. In the middle of those little three little catch points. And then you make sure that it catches on the sprocket here. So I think I got it. Close it. I know a lot of people will start cranking it while it's still like this, but I don't like that. I'm gonna close it. It's a quick way of telling. So push that back down. It's reset to like minus two. So you crank it once. And I am going to actually F16, one one thousandth. I don't have a cap on me, so I'm gonna just cover the front. One, two, and I started shooting at three. So frame one, frame two, frame three, frame four, and I told you I was on frame five, right? So this should be still exposed, frame five. And I'm gonna do an extra frame just in case the it caught at a different point on the uh, sprocket and it won't be exposed. So six, and now I know seven. So I'm gonna have an empty spot on frame six, okay? Or frame five, sorry. Shot empty on six, now I'm gonna shoot seven. So this is back in. So that's kind of how you, the old school pulling film out, because before, if you're shooting black and white or color and you want to switch films, that's what you have to do. You have to pull the film out. So that's a trick of how to do that. But other than that, um, the one of the things that me and Igor talked about, about shooting with a camera like an MA is uh, how a camera feels. And I've talked about this on my other videos. How a camera feels in your hand and how it makes you feel on an emotional level. Uh, we seem to focus so much on technology now that the technology will help you get the image. And that's partially true on the technical end, but on a creative end, you know, like for instance, here I have my coffee here. Thank you, Ben, uh, who uh, made this coffee for me and a camera girl who drank it. Uh, but, um, you know, a lot of creatives create an environment that makes them conducive to be creative. So they'll have their favorite pen, their favorite coffee, their favorite notebook, whatever it is, their, their favorite t-shirt. You know, Golden Boy, uh, Jerry Seinfeld would wear to write, uh, write his comedy. Whatever it was that would make them more creative. So how a camera looks and feels in your hand, it's conducive to creativity. And that's sometimes, uh, nothing against this camera, this is a beautiful camera, but sometimes how a camera makes you feel actually helps you take better pictures. So the M8, knowing that it's fully mechanical, there's no way of turning this thing off. It's fully mechanical. This gives you that feeling of like, I want to go and shoot. Uh, if there's any criticism about this camera, is that when you do crank it, because you know, it's a second nature. You shoot and then you crank it, right? So now it's cranked. Uh, you can easily accidentally press the shutter button. So if Leica could figure out some way of, like on their, um, other cameras, they have the on and off and the digital Leicas. If they can somehow put a mechanical lock right around the shutter, so like right here, if you just go like click and it locks the shutter, so it's technically not an off button, but a lock button on the shutter. And in fact, these things actually, some of them even will say lock. So if there's a way of locking the shutter, that would make this the perfect mechanical camera. So um, I'm not sure if I mentioned there is no metering in this camera, no and because that's why there's no battery. So you need to either have one of these babies, uh, a light meter, or you need to have a light meter app, which I use the, um, I use, what's the name of the app here? I use the light meter wheel. This one here, I love, I love using this app. And um, when you buy this camera, they actually give you one roll of, I thought I would, show you this it's my master 50 roll pack of tri-x and so uh you know people wonder oops if there's actually film in here and there is um you can see i'm on my second layer but there's 25 rolls of tri-x so uh if you want any let me know i'll share some of my stash here but uh, they give you tri-x because this is a perfect film to go along with the the ma so this is my 
very long but short review of the Leica MA. There's no real technical thing to do with it. I have the Minolta M Rocor 40. Now this has the auto, it picks the, the frame lines for you and this has picked the 50, which is incorrect. So all I know is that I gotta add an extra 15% around the edge um, or you can force the 35 lines by just cranking it, um, cranking it this way. Yeah, so you get the, and you can go as wide as 28 and you can go all the way to 135, but after 28, you'll need to get a, uh, a little viewfinder, bright line viewfinder up top here so you can see your actual framing and then still use the focusing. So um, my take on this is, is it worth $5,000? If you have the money for it, sure, go ahead and buy it because I think it's an awesome camera. For those that want built-in metering, you want the Leica MP. That is almost identical to this. And I've confirmed that with uh, Amir, another street photographer who has the MP, loves this camera. Uh, he actually says the shutter button feel feels different and the viewfinder feels, he feels that it's brighter than the MP. And that might be true because of the, the metering thing of in the MP. But other than that, it's pretty much the same camera. So um, if you don't want any, any electronics, then get the MA. All right, so that's it. This is my review of the Leica MA. Get it if you can afford it. If not, well then, too bad. But this is an awesome camera. One one thing to remind people though is this is all in full stops except when you get to the little flash lightning bolter. That's one fiftieth of a second. So you have to uh, remember that from sixtieth to thirtieth there is that one fiftieth. Okay. So other than that, it's all in full stops. So thank you very much for watching. Um, we will talk to you again soon and I will be posting my images that I've taken from the MA on my website so subscribe up top like if you can and uh, happy shooting click <laughs>